So since I released the uh, spiral cone antenna, quite a few people have been in contact and asked me if I would put that uh, particular antenna in the shop. Now one of the problems that you face when you want to sell something like an antenna is uh, if you're going to manufacture it, you want to keep those tolerances quite tight between each individual antenna. So if somebody purchases an an antenna off me and then a few weeks later they purchase another one, you want it to be virtually identical and not just from a uh, manufacturing purpose um, as an antenna as well, because uh, you know if it's slightly off, then it's off frequency. And that's uh, one of the things you have to be careful of when actually making an antenna. So to actually uh, produce one of these uh, spiral cone antennas so I'm able to sell it, what I've come up with is uh, this tool here, a uh, jig if you like, to help me produce the uh, spiral cone antenna and uh, produce it in a way that every one that I do actually turn on this little jig will be identical to the previous one. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you what I actually did to actually make this jig because this jig is a uh, left hand turn jig so in this video I'm going to make a right hand turn jig. So here are the uh, things that I'm going to use to actually make this uh, jig. Now I actually uh, did this, this, this one is the uh, only one I've made so far this is the uh, prototype one if you will and it came out just as I wanted so what I'm going to do is reproduce in this video exactly what I did to make this one. So here on the bench are the uh, materials that I'm going to make another one of these out of. Now I've got my cream horn tin and I put a link in the description and uh, I put a link in the description in the uh, previous video I did on the spiral cone but uh, we're going to be using one of these. I've got an old screwdriver, it can be a uh, Phillips or a uh, flathead, but uh, it really doesn't matter, just an old screwdriver. We only want uh, this part of the screwdriver and a small amount of the handle. I've got a uh, bicycle handlebar grip here, so uh, I can put that on the end, so when I'm wrapping around the wire, I've got something really good to grip on to. Here I've got a uh, torch from the uh, pound shop. Now I only want this uh, piece of metal tubing here so you could actually use uh, any old piece of metal tubing. That's about the same length as this and the same diameter. And with this tool I can reproduce the spiral cone antenna over and over and over again, each one being exact as the uh, previous one because it keeps the uh, nice coils nice and uniform the uh, distance between each one of these coils and also the angle of the coil that's all nice and uniform the same all the way down the uh, cone itself there. So the first thing you want to do is get your tube in here I've got the torch and I've got rid of all the bits that I don't actually want and uh, get your uh, donor screwdriver and uh, you want to get one with a fairly thin handle because what we're going to do is uh, grind away at the sides of this handle to bring the circumference of the handle down slightly so it will fit inside the tube. So I've ground down the handle of the screwdriver so as you can see it fits inside the tube now and I haven't used any epoxy yet but it's in there it's quite strong on its own but uh, what I'm going to do now is attach the cream horn cone. Now I've flared out the uh, cream horn cone as far as it will go so I've got a diameter across its base here of 35 millimeters. So what I'm going to actually be doing now is putting some epoxy resin around here because I'm going to attach the cone like so and push it in until it stops. Now the tube and the screwdriver, what that's going to do, it's going to butt up to the inside the, of the cone around here and it will hold its shape because of that. So where we flared it out here that will stay at 35 millimeters now because of the uh, top of the screwdriver and the tube itself will hold it in place. So I'm going to put plenty of epoxy down inside there now so we've got it in there nice and strong and it's not going to go anywhere. So now that the epoxy is actually set what I've done I've uh, trimmed away any excess of the screwdriver that I don't actually want and uh, I've got a little uh, cutting wheel and cut down to cut a V into the uh, screwdriver shaft itself. 
So here's a close up of the uh, V shape that I've actually cut out then and uh, the reason I've done this is because on the first one that I built I found it uh, quite difficult to try and drill a hole straight through the uh, screwdriver shaft here because it's such hard metal so if I cut a V out like that and uh, then insert this uh, screwdriver the body of this screwdriver is uh, slightly uh, wider than the uh, two millimeter diameter wire that we're going to be used to construct the antennas themselves so place it in that v shape there and i'll pinch that together with some pliers and uh, seal it up with a little bit of solder as well so the hole's finished now and what this actually does it grips hold of the wire like so and uh, what that means is you can you're then free to actually start turning this and that uh, little hole is going to hold the wire in place it just makes it a lot easier so I'm now getting ready to start wrapping the vinyl tape around the cone itself now this uh, vinyl tape this is quite cheap I think this roll cost me about two pounds free shipping and uh, it's uh, got a nine millimeter width which is the spacing we need in between the coils there but uh, because it's not backed it's uh, a little bit more messier to work with and uh, it doesn't like to be stretched and you do have to stretch it slightly as you're going around the contour of the cone itself now this is a little bit more expensive this is from the automotive section on ebay again it's nine millimeters in uh, width but uh, it is backed so it's a little bit easier to work with you can just peel the backing away for the uh, appropriate piece that you're actually working on sticking down at the time and uh, also this doesn't mind being stretched at all so it's a lot easier to get the contours around there i think this roll cost me about eight pounds off ebay so it's a little bit more expensive but uh, you'll get a much better job with this stuff as opposed to this i have tried using this and uh, it doesn't do a very good job at all it's a little bit messy now this one that we're making in the video is going to be a right hand turn polarized uh, cone antenna whereas the one that I've already made is a left hand turn because uh, you actually go from the base here to the uh, coils as it starts and it starts wrapping its way around in this direction which uh, is a left hand turn so we're going to be doing the complete opposite on this one which is going to be a right hand turn and it's a little bit confusing because we're going to actually start at the top here and uh, work our way down but I'm just going to do the opposite to what I've done in this one so as you can see I've started at the top here now the first layer is always the most difficult but I've got this extra piece here that uh, I've wrapped round this part which is uh, originally the screwdriver I'm going to cut this away at the end but uh, that's just to get me actually started because I'm looking at a uh, one millimeter gap in between each uh, coil of the tape so start off really slowly and get your first few coils correct and then it'll be much easier to actually uh, work down the cone after that so again stretch it and uh, get it into position so it's about one millimeter away from the first layer So you just take your time and keep working your way around, giving it nice and neat and evenly spaced out. And this is why this more expensive uh, vinyl tape is a lot better than uh, that red one. Now it is a little bit time consuming to do this and uh, especially getting it nice and neat but it's worth doing I think the first one took me probably about an hour to complete but uh, when you actually take the time to do this it makes it a lot easier to make a uh, cone helical antenna much more simplified and you don't even have to use a ruler to measure anything when you make one then. And as I'm working my way around here, I am sort of putting a little bit more force on uh, the bottom of the tape than I am at the top of the tape, just to manipulate it 
around the uh, contour of the uh, cone itself now if I was to untangle this vinyl tape it would no longer be straight it would have a curve in it so that's why it's important as well to get this uh, slightly more expensive vinyl tape that you can actually pull and stretch and manipulate around that cone So I've got all the way to the uh, base here now and uh, this little bit of waste here, don't cut that off. What you want to do is tuck it up inside the cone itself and that way it won't uh, fray so much from the uh, start here. And when we've got it all built up, what I uh, have done on the uh, first one that I made is put a little dab of epoxy on there just to hold that uh, end there so it doesn't actually start fraying. And uh, the same with the top one as well. So just tuck that up inside the cone. So now it's just a case of going around and repeating just to build up those layers and uh, I think I put six layers on this one but it's a little bit too high because the uh, coil does get slightly stuck in there when you want to uh, remove it from this tool. So I'm going to try with four layers with this one and see if uh, that works out a little bit better. At the end of the day we just want a groove just to guide and hold our wire just while we make it up so it doesn't have to be overly deep. So I've got five layers of the vinyl tape built up on this one now and uh, I've since managed to get hold of uh, some red vinyl tape so I've put a uh, layer of the red vinyl tape on here just so I can tell the difference between the uh, left hand polarised one and the right hand polarised one so what I'm going to do now is I've got a small file and I'm slowly going to go around in the grooves there just working it away just uh, opening it up a little bit more just like I have on this one so the wire fits nicely in between the uh, grooves on the tape there. So after using the file to clean out those grooves what I'm actually going to do now is put a uh, small amount of epoxy on the top here just to stop this from actually pulling away and uh, a little bit of epoxy on the bottom there to hold that in place as well. So this is the tool finished. I did take uh, probably the best part of 30 minutes actually cleaning out these grooves after I go in there with a file getting uh, little sticky bits out of there but it's well worth the effort so we'll give it a test now with some uh, of this 2mm garden wire. So to start off just feed a small amount of the wire through that hole there and then give it a couple of turns to lock it into position. And now we'll start actually putting the uh, turns in place. So get the first one going in that groove and just slowly keep working your way around. Keeping a little bit of pressure on, that's why this uh, grip is really good. And get them nice and straight. So as you can see, you can get uh, quite fast at doing this. All the way to the end. So now we just need to trim off the waste that we don't actually want and then we also need to cut it off here so we can actually slide it straight off. And it comes off just like that. So now we've got a perfect cone helical antenna. So now that we've got the tool made and we can actually turn out identical uh, cone helical antennas time and time again and quite quickly as well, I'll uh, hopefully be having some of these in the shop very very soon. So again I hope you found this video interesting and uh, any questions just let me know. If you've got any uh, other ideas how I could actually improve this, you know, please do uh, let me know and I'll uh, have a look at them. But uh, this is quite a, an efficient and easy way to actually uh, 
make these I mean yeah it does take a little bit of effort to uh, make the tool itself but uh, you know a few hours work and what that actually means is that, as you've just seen I can uh, soon turn one of these coils no problem and uh, they are exactly the same time and time again so you get that uh, quality control that you actually need if you want to sell a product so if you did enjoy the video please uh, give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me for the next one